Hi, welcome to my mini addiction. I make and paint miniatures and terrain for tabletop gaming, and today I want to talk about next level miniatures, uh, the Dragon's Horde Volume 2. I just finished painting the whole collection. This is something I've been working on, I think maybe about six, seven weeks, um, painting through everything and in previous videos I've showed most of the collection but in this last week I finished up the last 30 and I am finally done and ready to talk about uh, the collection as a whole which is awesome I did really enjoy painting volume one and volume two was great um, any questions that people had regarding a sizing was all taken care of in volume two the sizing is pretty spot on and once again great great detail on minis and such a variety of minis which is awesome so you've got some that are obviously can be you know PCs NPCs and then you know a whole variety of monsters and what's really funny is I actually just was invited to join a new D&D uh, campaign this month and uh, I was like you know putting a character together and it ended up being a halfling warlock well guess what there was one in the collection and I had just finished painting it. I'm like, oh, perfect. This is my character. And then we have a different campaign. We have a new player coming and he comes in and he's like, he wanted to play an Asimar Paladin. I was like, oh, wait, I have one of those too. I had literally just finished painting it. So, I mean, we're already starting to use um, minis in our game, which is uh, really exciting. And so let me talk a little bit about, of course, painting them you know, once again, really, really, you know, I think they're, they're easy to paint and, you know, there's so, so detailed, um, in a lot of things. I mean, like, you know, the owl bear, great, you know, feathers and, you know, so it's just, you know, I really, really like them, you know, dry brushing really brings out highlights because they're super, super textured and, you know, really great. And then also with, um, they, this time around they had, um, uh, their bases so they had a little bit of stuff on the bottom you know like this uh glabra zoo came with where he's he's standing on a rock and then you know i just kind of incorporated a couple extra rocks on the base and you know and it's like you know i painted them all up in similar colors but it's kind of added a little bit extra to um you know in in this collection which i really liked the uh volume one i was just kind of in a hurry to paint them all and for the most part i left the bases plain intending on going back and you know doing something down the road but i think i painted those in like i don't know six seven months ago or so and i haven't gone back so but here i was like okay i need to do something because they came with you know, whether it's, you know, like they're standing on cobbles or, you know, extra little rocks or things built into the base, I felt more compelled to, you know, decorate the bases a little bit. I didn't go super elaborate on them, but just added a little, you know, texturing or something to, you know, kind of bring, you know, make the piece a bit more complete. Um, as far as uh, durability, I had only like, okay, so first first time I did break a couple on volume one just while I was putting t them together and that could have just been uh, that was me um but then this time I only had the uh, it was the the human monk it's like standing on one leg and the leg had like the a little hairline crack that I just needed to glue and that once again could have been you know as I'm gluing it on the base you know something that I maybe just a little bit like but fixed super easy and then oh the poor Dracolich I saved him for the very end and as I was working on him uh, this actually delayed my video by a couple days I'm holding him and you know I've got hand cramps almost all the time and something is like my hands just like I don't know what happened he just kind of fell and actually I mean landed on my shoe that I thought was gonna be soft enough but I broke his wing no it wasn't the wing didn't come out of the socket where I had glued it together no it broke near the socket so it was like the piece was still in there but he's all fixed so you know super glue and then you know just a little bit of extra you know let that cure for a day and you know a tiny bit of extra glue just on the seam to make sure and it's like he's holding up great and went ahead and finished painting them so that completed the whole collection and then I did a little extra on him because I wanted to kind of 
you know, make glowy eye sockets a little bit. So I took a little uh, UV resin. I um, took some uh, glow in the dark pigment and just kind of mix it in and then little dabs in the eyes. So I show a picture when you hit it with UV light, um, it, in real life, it's so much brighter than in the picture, but the, you know, the eye sockets all of a sudden are, are a bright blue glow, which is kind of fun. So I don't know when we will incorporate him into a game, but I do have um, some black lights that I sometimes set up that I've done for, you know, with glowing mushroom groves and things like that. And so I've done this a few other times with minis that I want to kind of accent, you know, under special lighting. So that was something I did for the Draco Lich. And I think that is about it. Yeah, just once again, I mean, really unique characters. I mean, I love the gnome artificer, you know, and as, as so many characters, even though we have thousands and thousands of minis, I have to make new um, organizer drawers for different types that we didn't already have in our collection. So once again, uh, Next Level did a great job of incorporating um, minis that were, you know, categories that we didn't already have. I mean, uh, like a Goblin Drider. That, that's something I actually never thought of. So now we've got some. And so I really, really like this uh, set. Um, already back their uh, next Kickstarter, so uh, not sure how soon we'll end up getting that. This came a lot sooner than I expected, um, which was, was great. Uh, but yeah, really, really awesome set. Now I'm going to show you pictures of the whole set in its entirety. So these pictures I've, I've shown in previous videos, kind of recapping stuff I've painted, but here I've put it all together. Um, I kind of went through the checklist and put it in order of, you know, how stuff appeared on the checklist and which the checklist, by the way, was great for helping me keep track of what I painted and what I hadn't. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you want to stick around to the end of the video, I'll just go ahead and show you uh, close-up pictures of everything I've painted. And also, um, I encourage you, if you haven't subscribed uh, to my channel yet, uh, if you want, if you like what I do, want to see what I have coming up, it's October. There's some Halloween stuff in the works. My hands have been a little sore, so I think I'm going to take a break from minis because I kind of pumped out a lot here at the end. So I think I'm going to switch and do a, a big terrain piece next. I've got a haunted tavern in the works. Um, and then also, uh, I hope to get a bunch of witches and liches uh, done. I've I've kind of compiled a bunch and kind of for Halloween, I wanted to have, you know, this liches and witches kind of video put together plus the haunted tavern. So let's see how much I can get done. So um, yeah, if you subscribe, you can make sure you don't miss out on those upcoming videos. And uh, here we go. Enjoy all the minis from uh, Dragon's Horde Volume 2.